Hey, this is Rene. Welcome back to another video on this channel. And today I want to start to write a new expert advisor, which will be another scalping ad expert advisor, but the entries are based on the Donghian channel indicator. So this will be a two part series, I think, or three parts. And this will not be a series for absolute beginners. So I will not explain everything like simple variables or functions and stuff. If you're interested to learn more about the absolute beginning um, or the absolute basics of uh, programming, you can go watch some of the previous tutorials on this channel. There are a lot of playlists that you will find that also teach more basic stuff. Also, if you check out the links in the video description, you will find a link to the complete course, the MT5 Masterclass, where you really learn everything from an absolute beginner level to a more advanced level. So you are able to write your own trading strategies for the MetaTrader 5. But this video will be all about the Donkian Channel Indicator and especially a scalping strategy based on it. So what you can see here in the chart already is a chart of the euro or solar you can pick any charts any chart you like of course and i already attached the donkey and channel indicator here so you can see this indicator is really a simple indicator it just has one input which is for the candles and then it will always put a line where the highest and lowest point is of the last 20 or x bars so for example, if we go here, we can see if we go 20 bars back, this is the highest point. So the line will be at this point for the next 20 bars. And yeah, then it will start to drop because the next few candles are, um, have a lower high than, than this one. So this is what we can see here. For example, um, this is the highest high of the last 20 bars. And once this bar is no longer part of the 20 bars, the upper line will drop. So this is um, the general idea of the Donkey Channel Indicator. You can use the Donkey Indicator later for programming um, the entry signals, but you can also do it without the Donkey indi Channel Indicator, and I will show you this way. Also, what I want to do is I want to use these upper and lower lines as breakout levels for the entry of the positions. So you can see here, it's very often that once the line is reached, and the price breaks through the line. It's not the end of the movement. So very often you will see that it goes a little bit further, like 100 points, or here we will find 140 more points, here we will find 200 more points in this direction, like in this breakout direction. But this, of course, does not always happen. So in this case, it's only like 20 points. So this will be the... Um, the thing that we have to figure out. How often do we see the breakout? Is it significant? And can we capitalize on this? So the idea is to wait for these breakouts, then um, open positions as soon as we see the breakout. And then we will just open a position and um, use an aggressive trading stop, which makes it a scalping strategy. And also we could work with TP and stop loss levels that are really narrow, or at least the TP level, which kind of makes it a scalping strategy again so we're going for quick small profits and in the best case we would see a lot of profits so let's jump right into programming so whenever you want to write a trading strategy in the metatrader you can go to tools metaquotes language editor in your metatrader 5 which will open the metaquotes language editor which is the integrated development environment for the trading platform then you can click on file new or just click on this new button here in the upper left corner select expert advisor template it's usually pre-selected. Then you click on next, choose a name. We can say Donkian Channel Scalper. You can choose any name you like. Then click on next, next and finish. And this will create the expert advisor for you, or at least the raw skeleton of a new expert advisor. We will see a lot of these gray lines and some properties. This is the stuff that we um, can just delete because it has absolutely no impact on the functionality of the program. And we want to keep it as short and easy as possible. And now I like to rearrange my curly brackets because this is the way I like to see my code and the, the functions um, and yeah, everything designed. So this is what we have left. We have three functions, the on init, the on d init, and the on tick. Yeah, I will not cover the basics here, but the on init function is uh, triggered or executed if the program is initialized. The on d init is 
triggered when it is deinitialized and the on tick function is executed every time there's a tick in the chart. So we will put our main code here in the body of this function. So what are the tasks that we have to do? First of all, we'll have to find the upper level and the lower level of this Donkian channel. And again, we could use an indicator for this, but the Donkian channel indicator that I have here is not part of the MetaTrader 5 by default. So you will have to write it on your own or you will have to search for it in the internet. There are pretty many solutions. Also, you will learn how to write this expert advisor if you click on the first link in the video description and um, yeah, you will see the MetaTrader 5 masterclass there and you will learn everything um, about writing the Donkin Channel Indicator. But in this video, we, we won't use it because there's an, another easy way to get the highest and the lowest point of the last X bars because we have a function that um, will give us the highest point. So we can um, create a integer variable here, which we can call index highest, which will be the index of the highest bar of the last X bars. And here we use the I highest function because this function will give us the highest bar of the last X bars in a specified chart. So we first have to specify the chart and we will use um, or we will have to provide some parameters for this uh, I highest function. The first one is the symbol. With underscore symbol, we can always refer to the chart symbol where the EA is attached to. So if we put the EA on the Euro US dollar chart, this will hold the Euro US dollar value as a string value. And then we can choose a time frame. I usually like to make the time frame a input variable of type enum time frames, which is an enumeration for all the time frames that are available in the MetaTrader 5, for example. For example, we could choose the H1 period as a default value, and now we can use this variable here as a parameter for the I highest function. Then we have to choose if we want to have the high prices, the low prices, the open, the close prices of the last X bars. And in this case, of course, we will choose mode high because we want the highest value of the of the highs of the last 20 bars. And then we uh, yeah, just have to define a count and a starting value. In this case, the count will be like 20, for example, which is just like the, the periods for the Donkian channel indicator. Mm, so we can put another input variable here, which could be um, uh, Donkian channel candles. And we can choose just choose 20 uh, for, for, for the default value. So we use this parameter here, or this variable as a parameter for the I highest function. And then we can define the start value. In this case, we will just use zero, which is the default value anyways. And we can do the same thing for the lowest, uh, low of the last X bars, of course. So we can go here, I lowest, and now we just have to copy everything. The only thing we change is the mode, because in this case, we will choose mode low. So this is the way of getting the highest and lowest high or low of the last X bars. And if we write a quick chart comment, we can say something like high. Um, yeah, we, we, we don't really have this value yet. So we will just go ahead and say, we want also want the index here and we will print the highest index. Whoops, it's not high test, it's highest. And then we can close the brackets like this. And then we also want to print the low here. Um, which we also don't have, so we can just print the, the index of the lowest bar like this. hope that I didn't mess up the brackets here, but I think I'm good. So, okay, so now I've wrote these lines, and you can see I just wrote like five lines so far, or six lines, and I clicked on compile up here on this button, and now I can go back to the MetaTrader 5, Go back to the navigator of the MetaTrader 5, click on Expert Advisors, and here I should find the Donkian channel Scalper if the compilation uh, or compiling the program was successful. So I can drag it on my Euros dollar chart. Have a look at these inputs here. These are the two inputs that we defined. And then I can click on OK. And you will see in the upper left corner, we will find the index for the for the highest bar and for the lowest bar. So for the highest bar, it should be 18. So wait, let me check if this is correct. So if we start at the, the current bar, use the crosshair and then go back 18 bars, we find this bar, which is exactly the bar that is currently the highest high of the last 20 bars. Also for the low, it 
also worked. So this bar is at index 15. This is what is documented in the upper left corner now. And it is indeed the bar that has the lowest low of the last 20 bars. So since we don't have the high and low yet, we will have to um, get these values. So this is really easy. We just create another double variable, which we call high. And then we don't use the i highest function, but we use the i high function. Because this function will give us the high of a specific bar. And we can define the bar by providing the symbol, the time frame, and the shift value. And the shift value is now the index for the highest bar. Also, we can get the low here using kind of the same syntax, but the i low function and the index for the lowest bar, of course. Now, since we have these values, we can print them here. So let's just use the double to string value. Let's print the high and um, rounded to the amount of digits here for the symbol. And then we do the same thing for the low, of course. Okay, so like this, we can now see the high and the low price in the upper left corner. So you can see this is already working and we didn't even use the donkey and channel indicator for this. We just used uh, two simple functions which are part of the MQL5 framework anyway. So this is why MQL5 or MetaTrader 5 programming is so great. You pretty much have all the tools already for most of the, of the strategies or things that you want to do. Okay, so now we have the high and low price. Now we have to... I think we have to place orders, right? So what we can do is we can include the trade slash trade dot MQH file. So this will give us access to the C trade class. And again, I explained this in several tutorials before on the channel, and I explained this in really in a detailed way in the MetaTrader 5 Masterclass. So just check it out if you if you missed something uh, about this topic. So we can create a C trade um, object variable which I usually just call trade. And what we can do now is we can, um, how do we do this? I think we just, um, yeah. I think uh, we just do this once per bar. This is, I think, the best way to do it. So let's create another global variable, bars total, because we don't have to place the order every time. Um, and then we just, yeah, let's initialize it here with the i bars value. The i bars um, function returns the total amount of bars in a specific chart. And again, the chart is defined by providing the symbol and the time frame. This is usually the case if you have a, one of these standard functions of the uh, MQL5 framework. They usually ask for the symbol and the time frame to, to define a specific chart. So now we have the total amount of bars stored in this bars total variable. And now we can go to the onTick function again. We will get the value of the i bars, uh, the return value of the i bars function here again. And now we can check if bars total has a different value than the bars variable. Because in this case, we have a new bar. And then we simply want to update, um, uh, we want to update the, um, the bars total variable so we only process the code inside of this if statement once when a new bar is created so this is how you can can do this and here what we want to do here is now we want to open orders if we do not have an existing order so there are multiple ways of doing this i think the easiest way is um yeah, I mean, there are several ways we could just loop through all the open positions and orders and check if there are existing orders. We could also, um, work with, uh, more uh, variables, more global variables for the, for the buy position and the sell position. All of these things kind of work. Um, also we have to, um, think about like what happens if an order is executed and the price continues to to rise or just drops a little bit but the first order is not stopped out yet do we want to create another order or not maybe it makes sense to just place the order if the price is in the middle of the donkey channel like in the in the middle between these two values i think this kind of makes sense right so mm, what we want to do is like we want to check if or we want to get the, the like the middle 
of these two values, which is of course just high minus high uh, minus low divided by two. This should give us like the exact middle of these two values. You could also like write low plus, of course. I mean, it's completely the same. And then we want to check if, or we will get the bit price, like um, symbol info double, symbol, symbol bit. This will give us the bit price for the current chart symbol, or for the, no, this was not correct. It will give us the bit price for the symbol that we defined here as the first parameter for the symbol info double function. And now we can check if the bit price is below the middle price, and then we want to send by order and or we want to check if bit is above the middle price in this case case we can send uh, send sell orders um, okay so now we still have to check before we send an order we still have to check if we already have existing orders and i forgot to write the else if here so how do we do this we can yeah maybe yeah i will do it uh, like a little bit differently than in the previous tutorials. So what I want to do here is I want to check all the open orders in the, in the account right now. And we can do this using a simple loop. So we write int i is equal to orders total because this will give us the total amount of orders that are currently available in this account. And then we check if i is greater or equal to zero and then we subtract i uh, one from i after every iteration of this loop and what we want to do here now is we want to get the order ticket of the order at um, the specific index which is i in this case and then we will select an order if order select using the ticket number here so this means that we have a order and then we want to check if the order get um, integer. We want to check the order magic number. And um, and we also need. Oh wait, let's do it like this. We will create two more variables here, like buy order and sell order. Sell order. And then we loop through all the orders. We want to check if the order magic number is equal to the magic number that we will now create as an input variable. And I will explain this in a second. Just choose any number as a default value. And in this case, we, um, we can then check if the order get uh, integer order type, if it is order type, wait, order, is it not order type? Yeah, it is order type. By stop, if it is a by stop order, in this case, we will, update the by order variable with the order ticket here and else if order get integer order type equals to order type wait equals to order type cell stop in this case, we will update the cell order with the order ticket of the currently selected order here. So um, how does this magic number concept work? So a magic number is a, 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 a number that every order and every position in the MetaTrader 5 has in the background. So if I, if I just open any position here, like just maybe just a cell limit, you will see that in the toolbox here, you can activate the column magic number. And you will see it here. And you can see this column or the value in this column for this order is empty. This means that the magic number is zero when it comes like to the programming part. And every order that you place manually has the magic number zero. But if you place an order using an expert advisor, you can choose any other magic number that you want. 
And it's completely, it doesn't matter what number you can choose. Uh, you choose. You can choose one, two, three, four, six thousand, eight thousand, uh, sixty-nine. You can do whatever you want. So um, it's just a number that the expert advisor decided for the order, pretty much. And the, the concept of this is usually that a expert advisor has a input variable for this, for example, where you choose any number and this number should be unique for the account. So if you run, run 10 expert advisors, you can just choose a different magic number for every EA. So if you then search for positions in the expert advisor, you can just check the magic number of the position that you selected and the expert advisor will know if it is a position that it opened or if it is a position that belongs to another expert advisor. So this is a mechanism that you can use to like stop your EAs from modifying the positions of other EAs. So what we want to do here is, um, first of all, in the on init function, we will have to set the magic number for this trade object variable. So we can say set expert magic number. Then we choose oh, the value in this magic uh, input variable, of course. And this will take care of like providing the right magic number for every order that is opened by this EA. So now this will work and we will find the orders um, that were created by this EA if we, if we do it like this. So we can say by order here and mm, print the by order in the chart comment and also sell order here and print the sell order. So if we compile now we just have to take care of the position opening. So what we want to do here is if the bid price is below the middle price and by order is smaller or equal zero, which kind of means that we did not find an order here, then we want to send an order. So we can say um, bum, 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 trade by stop which is a function of the C trade class and we can decide to uh, send a position and we can use a lot size for this, which I usually like to make a input variable. So we can say buy stop and then lots and then we can choose a price and we already have the price for this, which is our high price, of course. So we would say high. Then we have the symbol, which is just the chart symbol in most cases. So we use underscore symbol. We can use a stop loss and a TP. For now, I won't do it. And then we can define, since this is a stop order, we can define how long this order should be active. And we can use for like for the day, for a specified period or for GTC, which is good to cancel. So this order will stay active until it is canceled. And then we will have an expiration time of zero because it's... It should stay active until it's cancelled and we can provide a comment. Yeah, I mean, um, let's just create a input for this maybe. So you know how to do this. This can be just like any string value here, uh, order comment, doesn't really matter. Or we can use DC scalper, so it kind of makes sense. So you already know on the first glance what position or order this is. Okay, so let's just copy this here and now open a sell stop order if there's a sell signal and of course this will be placed in the lowest low of the last 20 bars okay so the 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 ea is now good to go i will remove it here from the um from the chart and we will from now on work with the strategy tester because then we can see what would actually happen if we use the program. So, um, oh yeah, to open the strategy tester, just click on view strategy tester. You can open and close it this way. And then you can go to overview, visualize, choose the expert advisor that you want to test. In this case, it's the Donkey Channel Scalper, of course. And then you can make some settings. You can choose the symbol, the chart, period, and the date, like the testing period, I would just choose the current year so the tests uh, load faster. And then the modeling method, every tick based on real ticks is the recommended method here because it's the most accurate. And then you should tick this for the visual mode. Then we have the inputs. I mean, we could change these values if you want to like optimize or test the strategy, but for now we will go with the default values and have a look at the magic number in the DC Skyper order comment because we will find this later on if the EA places orders. So let's check what, 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 what happens here. So you can see, oh, the, wait, let me start the test again and maybe a little bit slower. So 
<sighs> okay, so what we see here, there's a new, there, there, there was a new bar created and we can see a sell stop order. Unfortunately, we don't see the buy stop order. So I would have to check this again. Um, but yeah, you can see the sell stop uh, order is placed and it is at the low of the last 20 bars. Also, if we go to the, to the overview here and if we go to columns, ah, actually we don't see the magic number in the strategy test, I think. Mm, yeah, this is not really cool. Yeah, but trust me, I mean, the magic number for this position is 111 because this is um, the, uh, the magic number that I chose for the positions. Yeah, I think we, we, we cannot really see it in the strategy tester. But yeah, I mean, you can just test it in the, <clears throat> like in a, in a normal account and you will see that it chooses the magic number that we, um, that we want for this EA. Okay, so this kind of works. The sell stop order is placed. Let, let me check why the buy stop order is not placed. Uh, so the buy stop order should be placed at the high. Oh yeah, I mean, of course it's not placed because there was no signal. So, um, and also I just re realized one more thing. We can check here if we were able to send this buy stop or sell stop order. Wait, just wrap it in another if statement. And then if this was successful, we can update the sell order variable with the trade result order um, return value. And here also with the trade result order return value. So it will update it right away in the chart comment. So let me do one last test here. And I think then um, I can finish this. Okay, so you can see there is the sell order. Now, if the price drops a little bit into the middle of the um, um, of the range, we should also see buy stop orders. Okay, yeah, so this works, but there's still a major problem because we seem to place multiple sell stop orders. So let me fix this. Yeah, I forgot to check if sell order is smaller or equal zero. Okay, so now this should be good. And we now place the first initial order at the highest point of the last X bars and the lowest uh, point of the last X bars. And you can see these orders can become executed. Then you have a position. And this is a perfect example for the breakout that we want to see. So at this point, we would then start to work with a TP, a trading stop, a stop loss and whatever. But this is something we will do in the last, uh, on the next videos. So maybe there will be one or two more parts for this um, series. And then we will, we will see if we can write a strategy that, uh, strategy that could actually work in a, in, a, in a live account. So yeah, in the next video, I think we will have to take care of like, um, yeah, providing TP, SL, and maybe also um, um, position management, trade management. And there's one last thing that I can show you. Since this um, position was now opened, it is no longer a sell order. So when we have a open position, we can then open another sell order if the price uh, reaches the middle of these two lines again. And this is what ju just happened, uh, happened here. But enough for this video. In the next video, we will go on with this EA. Hope you, um, hope you want to follow along. Make sure to like and subscribe if you're not subscribed already so you do not miss out the next videos of this series. So in the end, thanks for watching. Have a great time. See you next time. Until then, um, yeah, good trades. Bye-bye.